are the changes in insurance causing all of this inventory? Today, we're going to take a look. Yo, I'm Adrian, longtime Florida realtor, and I'm here to help you get your Florida life. Happy Wednesday, everyone. If you're new here, new videos come out every Wednesday. Please subscribe to follow along. It's a question I get asked all day long. Are all the changes in insurance causing people to sell their homes? Today, I'm going to do my best to break some of the numbers down for you. To be very fair, it's not really possible to narrow down everybody's motivation into numbers, but I thought we would do a fun little flood zone face off and see what we can uncover. I'm going to give you the numbers first, and then I will break them down for you a little bit more as we go along and at the end. Let's start with a little recap of the flood zones. Now I have a whole video on this to give you all the details, but for this video, you should know two things. X and D are the preferred by insurance agents or the lower risk, or there's all kinds of names for it, flood zones. And A, E, and V are the higher risk, less preferred flood zones, according to insurance. The big thing that a lot of people need to know and need to remember is if you get a mortgage, if you use a lender in X or D, the lender is not gonna make you get insurance, or I have never run into that and A, E, and V, they absolutely are. Now, a couple of things. A, E, and V, you can be in that flood zone and not be on the water. You can just be near the water. If you watch this video and say, I'll be across the street from the water, you're still gonna be in A, E, or V, very likely. You can be on the water in X and D, it's much harder to do, and boating-wise, it's, it's kind of rare, or you're getting in, in difficult boating or very shallow boating or, or something to that effect. We're mostly gonna look at months of inventory. If you watch my videos a lot, I talk about this a lot. Months of inventory tells us how fast the homes are selling and how fast they're getting eaten up as they hit the market. If everything stays the same and the, the homes get sold at the same rate, how many months will it take everything that's currently on the market to get sold if nothing else comes up? It doesn't really happen that we get down to zero homes on the market even in 2021, but it gives us a sense. The higher the number, the more of a buyer's market it is. The lower the number, the more of a seller's market it is. If there's a really high number, buyers aren't buying as much as people are putting on the market, which we are going to see in this video because we are in a buyer's market in Charlotte County. For these numbers, I took single family homes and I took no new construction because in the different zones, new construction is recorded differently. It's very technical. I'm not going to get into it. Just trust me, it would skew the numbers and we would get absolutely nothing from these results. First face off is all of Charlotte County. We're going to do X and D against A, E and V and see who's got the higher months of inventory, where are the house is selling. Let's look. In X and D, which is again the lower risk, we have 817 active homes in the last 30 days, 155 have sold, months of inventory 5.2. Still almost a little bit of a balanced market there, headed towards the buyers. A, E, and V, not looking as good. Active 744, sold 102. Months of inventory, 729. Now, the next category was really interesting to me. The next two, actually, I thought I would break it up by price tiers. And what I expected was in the lower price tiers, A, E, and V would be doing terrible because if you're under $250,000 to pay flood insurance on top of all that is kind of rough. And also under $250,000, if you're in a flood zone, you are unlikely to have water behind your house. But let's take a look. X and D, we have 1.72 months of inventory. In A, E, and V, we have 1.66. So they're actually neck and neck under 250,000. There's not a lot of homes under 250,000, as you can see, but they're neck and neck. Where I thought A, E, and V would shine is over 900,000. Now, don't get me wrong. We have a lot of waterfront inventory out there. I actually, when I kind of think back, I think, why did I, why did I think that? Except I thought, Okay, if you're 
in the over $900,000 range, you can likely afford the flood insurance. You probably don't like to pay the flood insurance, but you can do it. Let's take a look at what the results actually were. We have in X and D over 900,000, 5.33 months. In AEV, we have 8.2. Now to be fair, we have so few houses in X and D that are for sale over 900,000. I don't know if this is a great sample, but definitely A, E, and B are in a, a strong buyer's market over 900,000. I'm gonna talk more about that in my summary though. Let's, we'll get back to it. So then I thought I'd take the mid-range homes, 300,000 to 700. We have 634 in X and D. We have 5.92 months of inventory. Definitely heading into a buyer's market there. A, E, B, we are in we are at 8.46 months of inventory. What do I think is happening here? You might see these numbers and think, oh, the fear of flood or the fear of, or the hassle of flood insurance is causing people to leave. I actually don't think that's what it is. And again, you can always disagree with me in the comment comments. I like to hear your opinions. We did have some people selling after Hurricane Ian, but I do think most of those people, if that really scared you, they have done it already. It's been a year and a half. We've kind of moved past that. I don't feel like it was a mass exodus after that. Now, of course, homeowner's insurance has gone up as well. It's not as easy for me to research that, but you should know in flood insurance, if you already live here, what the government has done is they've set a premium that we're all supposed to sort of get to. But if you already have flood insurance, it's only going up 18% a year. And I mean, I shouldn't use the word only because I pay flood insurance. I don't love it either, but it's going up in increments. So this big hit is not hitting us in the way that you might think. There might be sellers who that's kind of the, the last straw. Maybe there's something else going on in their life and they're like, well, we can get rid of flood insurance too, but I don't really see that as much. Now there are people who do not have flood insurance at all especially in the higher price ranges who say, hey, we'll self-insure. And those people probably aren't as affected by flood insurance as general, in general because they didn't have it before. They're not getting it now. What you need to know as a buyer, if you find a home that already has flood insurance, often you could transfer that insurance. You can take advantage of sellers in lower costs. Now it's gonna go up 18% for you too, it's not gonna last forever, but it is nicer than paying the full amount. What I think is actually happening is frankly, a lot of things in our market, I don't wanna blame the high inventory on one thing because I don't think this kind of market change happens for one reason. There's taxes have gone up. Of course, there's homeowners that have gone up and there are a lot of people who just bought and the market kind of got saturated with that before and now we're changing. So there's a lot of elements to it. However, I do think it's a lot of sticker shock for a lot of buyers to have all of these things going on at once, even when they can afford it. You know, I tell buyers frequently, flood insurance, if they don't have it already, could be $5,000. I hear this all the time. We pay $1,500 $1, a year in you know, the Midwest. The flood insurance doesn't include homeowners. There are people in our area paying $7,000 a year for insurance. This is a shock the first few times you hear it. And you have to adjust to that. Again, even if you can pay it, you might say, is this what we're really gonna do here? So what's gonna happen? Is our market just gonna be rough for sellers forever? What's gonna happen? I think that as far as insurance goes, eventually buyers will wrap their brains around this and end up paying it. And why do I think that? Because there are lots of coastal cities that are still more expensive than, most coastal cities are more expensive than we are. I hear a lot from buyers that nobody can afford that. Somebody can afford it. I know it because they buy in Sarasota, they buy in Naples. There are people who can buy, who can do it, they just right now don't want to because it's such a shock. Eventually, it'll become like everything else that you get used to paying. I don't think these prices are going down anytime soon. So if you're thinking of buying and you're thinking, and I'm talking about insurance costs, and you're thinking, well, maybe the insurance, they'll change things. And in two years, 
it'll be cheaper. Maybe it's more likely to me that prices, that home prices are going to go down than insurance prices are going to go down. And taxes are not, I don't ever think taxes are, maybe I'm a, a pessimist. I don't think they're ever going to go down. So if those are things you're waiting for, don't wait. It's not going to help you. If you're waiting for prices to go down, th that could happen. I hope this helps. If you have any questions or thoughts, please leave them below or shoot me an email. I'll talk to you soon.